continue moving on down the line to our next topic. So one of the things that we have been working on in Shell, I think as I said earlier, is helping uh, small minority and women owned biz businesses get a better understanding of what our total supply chain looks like and how it works. Um, one of the things that is true is that our industry is, um, is, a, is somewhat challenging to break into. There are lots of challenges, especially in working with a very large company like Shell. But Shell does not operate in isolation. We have a, a supply chain that begins with uh, resources in the ground, but extends far, far beyond us and into the consumer realm. So helping suppliers understand what the total supply chain looks like and to help them find their fit is one of our objectives. So our next section, I'm going to talk for a bit about the first portion of the Shell supply chain. And that is the portion that we call the upstream business. The upstream business in the oil and gas supply chain is the portion that covers finding resources, oil and gas resources, getting them up out of the ground so that they can then be moved to a place where they can be where they can be refined and can be converted into useful products and resources for our consumers. There are three major portions to the upstream part of the supply chain and it begins with the identify stage of the supply chain. And in that stage, we have a number of scientists and engineers and other very talented and very, very smart people who work together to help identify where oil and gas resources may be. So this includes geologists, physicists, mathematicians, and IT specialists that work together and they work with extremely sophisticated technology systems and tools to understand the structure of the earth underground. So let me, let me zoom in right there. We're talking about understanding what's going on under the surface of the earth where we cannot see. And in the advancement of technology these days, you might suppose that there is some technology that exists that allows you to just look, look you know, hundreds of feet or thousands of feet below, below the surface of the earth and know what's there. But that technology really does not exist. We are developing that technology and have been developing it for years, but it is, it is not an x-ray type technology that allows you to know for sure where the oil and gas resources are. So it is a, a very, um, a very uh, proprietary, highly technical approach to trying to identify where oil and gas resources may be. In fact, it is akin to the kind of technological sophistication that it takes to explore the moon or to explore the bottom of the ocean. So once you have identified or you believe you've identified where oil and gas resources exist, then you move on to the explore stage of the upstream supply chain. So this is where major risk assessments are taking place. It's about determining how confident we are that we have truly identified where, where significant oil and gas resources exist and then weighing the risks of pursuing those resources in terms of the degree of success we think we will have. So at this point, we begin by drilling an exploratory well. Risk assessment becomes critical and this is where physical operations begin because we're drilling our first well. So that means that safety becomes paramount. Safety as well as environmental concerns become extremely crucial beginning at this point. This is also the point in the supply chain where we begin to spend a lot of money. This is where our major cash outflows begin, but at this point we are really not making any money. Money's going out, but money has not yet begun to come in. So we're still in the, in the exploratory stage. 
the thing to understand also about this, this stage, both the identify and the explore stage, is that there are very few real supplier opportunities. This is a highly proprietary, highly internal piece of the supply chain. Well, so once we've identified and we've dug an exploratory well and we're pretty confident we need to move ahead and we've done our risk assessment and believe that we have found significant oil and gas reserves, the next phase of the, of the process is to design and construct the, um, the, the structures that are allowed for us to move into actually producing oil and gas. So our exploratory well at this point has been a success. We found oil and gas. So now we are using various types of services, both internally and externally, to actually construct our well. The ultimate goal here is to ensure that the well is environmentally sound, that it's safe, and that it's efficient because this is how we will ensure that we actually maximize the potential of the well, which will help us to maximize our, the amount of money that we can make from having made this investment into this well. So this is the first major operational step in the oil and gas supply chain. And that comes up next, which is production. And it's during production that the crude oil and the natural gas actually begins to be produced out of the well, whether it's uh, on land, a land well, or whether it's um, a, a deep sea well. The oil produ production includes the drilling, it includes extracting the, the resources, and includes recovering it from, uh, from underground. And here are some characteristics of this, pa this part of the supply chain. This is where our cash outflow really accelerates. Now we're really spending money big time but it's also where revenue generation begins because this is where we're beginning to take the resources out of the ground and beginning to make some money. Um, there are a number of competitive advantages that occur during the production stage that can help us increase revenue. And then this is one of the places where there's potential for some of our suppliers to help us build competitive advantage because it's all about getting those resources out of the ground and getting them ready to be moved into the supply chain in the safest, most reliable, most environmentally safe and sound way and to get as much out of that well as possible to justify and to cover the costs that we have invested in putting that well in place. So there are a variety of supplier opportunities and they increase dramatically. So I'll talk a little bit now about what some of those opportunities look like. So um, again, some of the key takeaways from this stage, this is the upstream stage where we have first identified, we've done exploratory drilling, then we have engineered and set up our well and we're in the production stage. This is comparable again in the technical complexity to the technical complexity of space travel. It's a health, safety and environmental and security experience is critical and again it's not just to have the the capability in place but to have demonstrated that capability with experience and to have a good track record in HSSNE health safety security and environmental this stage is highly internal and extremely confidential because this is a place where where companies have very proprietary technology strong technical talent is a high competitive advantage, and here are some of the supplier opportunities that develop. So logistics, transportation, and housing, as an example. Uh, offshore facility services, engineering, procurement, and construction services. So you may hear the acronym EPC, EPC contractors. These are major contractors that manage a variety of services in engineering, procurement, and construction. Um, fabrication of, of hard pieces of equipment. Maintenance services, electrical and instrumentation services, and fracking services or hydraulic fracturing services, as well as rotating and static equipment services. So here are some of the opportunities that develop. Most of these develop in the production phase, and that's where we begin to have to be looking externally for very strong suppliers to help us build competitive advantage in this space. So as I talk with you, as you listen to what this upstream piece of the business looks like, 
this is again the portion where we're finding and bringing oil and gas out of the out of the ground I'd like you to be thinking about for your business are there any touch points in any of these spaces as I've as I've gone through the list of supplier opportunities if your business is in some of these spaces then Perhaps you might have opportunity to work with Shell or to work with some of our major suppliers, such as the EPC contractors, the Engineering Procurement and Construction Service contractors. So this is the first part of that supply chain. And in, in a couple of segments, a little bit later this afternoon, we'll be talking about two other major segments of the oil and gas supply chain. We'll be talking about the midstream portion of the supply chain, which is all about how you move the resources once you've gotten them up out of the ground, how you move them around and get them to a position where you can refine them into products and get them to our final consumers, the people who use the resources, and then the downstream, which is all about how we take those, those resources that have come up out of the ground and move them to a place where we can turn them into the products and in, including the, the gasoline and the other fuels that our consumers use. So thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to take a little bit of a break and uh, we'll be back with our next segment in about 15 minutes. Thank you.